so you are welcome to this tutorial and here i'll be showing you how to make a lacing back you can see the picture on the screen so what you need first of all is your basic bodice pattern so this is the back so if you can draft a basic bodice pattern you'll be able to do that so i'll come down by one inch from the upper chest to be able to mark the yoke the depth of the yoke so the yoke will be as deep as the upper chest or below the upper chest then the next thing is the spacing the lacing space the lacing space on the upper part is five inches divided by two will give me two and a half so i just mark that and on the lower part you can see it's a v shape so the upper the lower part will not be as much it's one inch and um, when you open it up it will be two inches so I have one on the lower part and 2.5 on the upper part. So that's what I just measured. I'm trying to shade the yoke, the yoke part so that I'll be able to identify easily. So I'll just input the dart, the normal way you input that on the basic body. So I'll just run it through to the upper chest like so. So this is the dart. The dart is not compulsory, but sometimes if you feel like inputting the dart you can see input even if you did not input the dart it is not compulsory because you know it's a lacing so you are still going to you're, you're going to tie it up to what you want so you are going to adjust it's adjustable so that's why it is not compulsory you input the dart if you don't input the dart there's no problem here i'm trying to input the sewing the all the measurements the length of this dress is longer by two inches than the actual half length so i use a low waist so that's why i input all the circumference on that low waist also i input the circumference that i have measured there so all these things um you're going to connect like so because you have added everything that i supposed to add i've added the sewing allowance there so i'll just blend those sharp points and uh, we are almost done with the pattern drafting and if you are familiar with um, basic bodies pattern drafting this should not be a problem at all it's very easy to draft in the back bodies even than the front bodies so it's normal basic bodies pattern that we use in drafting this so and i have explained the space how i i space the lacing part so it is not a standard that the space should be five inches on top and the three one inch at the bottom so these are the material that i'm going to use for the sewing these are the materials so i have cut the fabric using the pattern so i added you can see i added sewing allowance all through so and i'll be explaining this one this is cut on food so i added half inch here half inch all through so that's the half inch sewing allowance that i'm going to use to sew the spacing uh, underlay and here i also added half inch to the pattern because we are going to join this to the yoke so that's why the half inch is very very essential i also added half inch here because i'm going to use this one as a sewing allowance so and uh, here i added two inches unfold don't forget this is unfold so that means when you are cutting your all your pattern make sure you keep it none should be lost so i added two inches all through and on the down part also i added two inches because you are going to turn this inside the skirt this is the rope so you can just cut a tiny rope of um, width one inch fold it up and then uh, stitch it to make the button loops so if you consider the style there is a button loop on the upper part on the yoke part so the button loop inches will be two two inches long then when you fold it up it will be like one inch when you fold it up and you can all only stitch a tiny part so that you'll be left with maybe three quarter of an inch so i hope you get that so after i have stitched that the next thing is to turn the neckline with a bias tape and after i'm done with that the next thing is to mark the spacing for the loops the button loops will be spaced by one one inch so i'll just go up like that so i'm sorry you may not be able to see the chalk but it's one inch space for the loops so i'll just go ahead and space it by one one inch so i'll just cut two inches and fold it when i fold it just consider the way i'm placing it so so this is the way i'm going to place it i hope you can see it so so that by the time i turn it with a, a bias tape it will fall to the front to the center back 
so i'll just place it like so the loop is facing the left hand side right now but by the time i turn it with this bias tape it will now be turned it will now face the right hand side so i hope you get the logic I have the loops ready. You can see it's neat and it's ready. The two, the two spaces are 5 inches, if you can remember. That's why I told you, put the space in mind. So I'm going to notch where the two, dividing 5 inches by 2 will give us 2.5. So it will be 2.5 on each side of the yoke. So I'll be starting on 2 inches space because by the time I use half inch to turn, that the 2.5 will be completed from this so i'm just going to leave half inch you can see i'm folding half inch up like so i hope you can get what i'm trying to say so that half inch will be used to turn that side the line so i'll i'm starting here right now i won't start exactly on the fabric i will leave half inch sewing allowance that half inch will be left to be able to complete and perfect the finishing of this area so i'll just start stitch it starting from half inch i will leave half inch space so um the, the, this one this part will be folded up and stitch like so the next area and we are going to use the lining to turn that half inch space so we're going to place it like so and turn it up so i'll just stitch like so so here the line is used to turn everything inward i need it so i'll be using this to mark the center back the way I place it on the machine, I'll be using that line to mark the center back. Then I will input the measurement right here. So all I need is 2.5 on each side. So that and I need one inch on each side here on the lower part. This, the next thing to do is to go and place the lacing space on a uh, um, under the major fabric the back bodies so i'm going to place it like so just make sure you note the spacing the two inches spacings on this on the down part must be noted and stitch it like so so take note of this area i'm inputting the lacing space already here so i'm inputting the lacing space on the dart on the dart line i just input it on the dart line like so so when i open it up this is what we have the lacing space has been placed on one side and the other side will just overlap so what we have here is the lines where the bones will come through so i'm going to mark like so so i'm trying to mark one one half half inch half half inch will be able to accommodate the bones so my boning will come inward here so i have three lines that will come in three spaces will be here so another this second space will be for the grommet pins the grommet pins will be attached on this wider space it is one inch wide because of this the ring that i'm going to put here and another space here is half inch so i have like three spaces here one two three so two will be for the bones and one will be for the grommet pin the center one will be for the grommet pin and the side the side um ones will be for the bones so i'm going to stitch it up like so just like you are creating a channel so i'll be stitching it like so so i will stitch this directly on the overlay underlay so then the other ones will be stitched not on the underlay just to hold the underlay down so i will not get to the waistline here because this waist this this downside, which is the waist, will be attached to the skirt. So don't allow your stitch to get to this part. So the next thing is, you know, the underlay is no more under it now. I pull it up. Then I'm going to stitch, create another channel here. Just run a straight line through all those uh, places that I chalk. So that's what I'm doing. Running a straight line through the spaces that I chalk. So as to have space for my bones. So the bones will be on either sides. So... I have two bones then the center one will be for the grommet so wrap the bones up on both ends with paper tape like so so that it will not 
poke the body or injure the body so put it inside like so with the measurement then leave half inch measurement for your sewing allowance so that the bones will not intrude when you are trying to place the upper bones on the skirt so i hope you get that then after i have placed my bones the next thing to do is to mark the spacing for my ring the grommet and pins so the spacing is one one inch one one inch spacing so the next thing is to get the soldering iron when it is very hot then i'll use it to create holes i'll use it to create holes the holes must be the circumference of your grommet pin it must not be bigger than it and it must not be smaller so then after i've created the holes but you must be very very careful so that it will not spoil other places when you are using the hot and soldering iron so this is what i have after i have done that this is what i have you can see the skirt has been placed here but i'm still going to show you in this same tutorial how to fix your skirt so we have two pieces for this type of grommet pin we have the watcher and we have the pin itself so we are going first of all going to place the pin the pin can come inside this come and sit here and uh, you're going to place it like so i have done some place it like so you can see this is the right side the right side will be placed like so just place the right side facing the down part so then i'm going to place the watcher on it so I'll bring the watcher on it and drop it like so. After I have dropped it, then I'll now press down my plier. This I'll is the outcome. You can see it's beautiful. And um, the lacing can come inward. You can bring in the rope now and pass the rope through. And pass the rope through and use it to lace it. So this is what we have. Uh, I have fixed the button for the button loops. I have fixed the button. It's untacking that I used to fix the button. You can use the cover button or you can use all this and fancy button like I did in my own case. So you can just go ahead and lace it up like so. So uh, the rope that you are going to create for your grommets and pins must be in accordance to the space. So like this one now, because of the width of the grommet pin, I made the row as wide as um, half of an inch. So it's almost half of an inch. So that means when I want to create the rope, I make sure the rope is almost um, one and a half inch width. One and a half inch width, then it's as long as 100 inches. 100 inches. The rope must be as long as 100. And as you can see, I've come to the end of this tutorial. Don't forget to like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. If you have any suggestion, leave it in the comment section. And I also have physical and online classes you can register for if you are interested. So if you are interested in that, contact the number on the screen. And I will see you in my next tutorial.